Viper's back set hit 40. You're truly at a loss for what to do at this point? Yeah. You want to know why? I know why you're at a loss. Because this is how you think up things to do. First, you think about what lineups you have, and then you come up with a plan. And so you, you're at a loss because you have a couple lineups for your A hit. You've got your bouncing dart drone combo. Uh, you have your close recon and then you have your your normal recon which i believe lands like over here so you have these three recons and so you're thinking about the game that way and this is a perfect set of util i don't need you to have more than this more than enough i'm thinking about the game in terms of what are my enemies doing do they rotate quickly do they uh, what angles do they fight so in my head when i'm playing the game or watching you play this game I see a couple of patterns. They play a little passive mid. They like to fight from nest, but they play pretty aggressive mid doors. They also like to fight for A main, not so much elbow. They play in this area on B, usually with a Viper orb. So this is my initial model. And what immediately stands out to you in this fallow plant? Something should jump out. It's, it's screaming your name. You missed it, you list. Halls! Halls is open! What are they doing halls? You just found out what they're doing halls. You just walked up it for free. They're doing nothing. They're not halls. They're not even fighting for it. So we can just split A up halls with like two fast. Force them to come halls. See how they adjust. Time for the next call. Maybe that pulls the nest player over and suddenly an elbow contact is really strong because their uh, nest player is now playing over here and nobody else adjusted. But yeah, you're, you're not like calling to fight this mid guy is also good. Um, because they are very predictable and this is a bad fight for them. So saying like free pick in mid, I wouldn't call it a free pick, but it's a good idea to fight them if you have numbers. Okay. I'm with you, but this is how you need to be thinking about the game. And instead you're thinking about what lineups do I have? Let's call one of them. Way too slow to rotate against teams that don't threaten any lurk, burn too much recon, hunting down lurkers that don't exist. Lineups are meant to be used when you already happen to be in position. They're designed to be thrown from. Play more by the book on defense. No need to get super creative. Defense pretty straightforward. Oh, bet, 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 bet. Breeze has really easy defense too. So we're gonna watch defense first. Cause you should just be playing uh like nest. Fast rotate. Your justice frightens me, Viper. I also don't recall saying that they're not, to be clear. I was tapped out, it's mid doors. Rotate Pete Sight. Standing ahead. Cypher's I was tapped out. It's mid doors. Yeah, so I really don't like that we're not telling these guys to tuck now, like actively, because you're getting ready to throw like a strong dart, and then of course you like you miss it. So I'm gonna have to give you a strike. Like, like I mean, just look at this. This is so not practiced at all. Like your pre fires are hitting this box. It's mid doors. And then that metal bar. And then you miss the dart. So like I have to call this a strike because you gotta go practice this. Like I really hope that after this game you just booted up Breeze and you ran this like ten times in a row, where you you pre-fire these bullets more correctly, and you uh, throw this dart. I feel like I'm watching a player who's not dialed. Wall up, wall up, eh? Does that hit? Okay, it did it. Oh no, I don't think it did. He threw it really off. I think that might be like too far to the right. I can't tell. Good thing I have my breeze guy right here. Dart can be used to also uh, hold A or for a retake A. Is you come and just peek the pyramid and you aim at the bottom, the middle of the bottom part of the the dark spot. And you double bounce full charge. Yeah, you're aiming like really far to the left. Wall up, wall up, eh? I can't tell if it's landing or not. It looks like it might be too high. Nice shot. I know exactly. I rushed the darts during this VOD, sadly. I take the time to fix them after a match, but they're shaky in this one. Yeah, but like, then what do you think I'm gonna tell you? Like, <laughs> One enemy remains you're so the main and you're shaky on the the fast retake darts. I'm gonna tell you to go run it back. Oh 
minus 80. Jeez, Vandal down on me. Yeah, I feel like you're not dialed. I, I don't care about losing the gunfight. I care about the calm after. Listen to your calm after. Minus 80. Jeez, Vandal down on me. Minus 80. Jeez. Cypher, bridge. Or minus 80, bridge. It's like you're not in the heads. You're not locked in, dude. You know the lock in meme that's been going around? The guy from Parasite? I feel like that's not you right now. You are not locked in. I lock in the back half of defense. Oh, okay, bad. Say less. Let me see it. Bet. Uh, bottom mid, Viper. Spike Viper down, Viper down. Got Spike. Revealing area. Spike's here. That's clone. One enemy remaining. Reloading. Blocking sight. Flawless. Nice. Good round. You guys are so much better than my. Better, but like, you're not dripping in sweat yet. Look, look. This was good. You come the dart and everything. Good. That's clone. One enemy remaining. Reloading. You'd be like, yo, Rayna, I'm gonna peek mid. Come with me. I've got drone. Yo, Jet's mid. I'm gonna drone her. It's like, there's a lot of obvious easy comms to make here that you're not making. Agreed? Like, I'm not asking you to identify, like, the world's craziest strategy. I'm asking you to take the Reyna, who's right in front of you, and tell them to play with you. Bottom mid for info back. Standing ahead. Sheriff. Yeah, like, you just calmed Sheriff. Like, you're contextually requiring your teammates to remember that you're reconning bot mid. And, like, of course they have a sheriff. Look at their money. Brandon, if you want to switch with me, say it. They're on eco. We know this, right? Like, oh my god, that's how long you checked it on? Okay, actually, we don't know for a fact they're on full eco. Just, so it's a I good comp. Maybe start bottom mid for info. Bottom mid for info back. Standing ahead. They asked for the bot mid recon, so I assumed. I mean, you say, like, one bot mid. Sheriff? You calmed Sheriff. <laughs> like, I've never played Viper. Get yeah, Viper wall or not. Okay. Follow drone and we win. Okay. 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 Revealing area. Wall up. Reloading. Running out. Bro, I'm dead. Reloading. 50 on jet backside. Yeah, I wouldn't have shot the drone tag blind Bro, like dead. this. You just wasted your drone tag. Is it cope to blame my Viper for running out and dying? Oh, I don't give a fuck about this guy. You just shot your drone tag blind through the Viper wall, even though your recon is about to land back there. And now you can't tag the, the dude jet right side. here for free. Them. Nobody follow drone. Reloading. Uh. Last. Them. Nobody follow drone. Reloading. I'm sending dart, for, sending dart for sending dart for backside. If you guys follow drone, we win. Doesn't matter if we have viper wall or not. Okay. Follow drone. Yeah. Also, his last five seconds, and you said if we follow drone, it like to be clear, your viper through the round, hundred percent. But there's a lot we did wrong, which I don't like. You have to specifically say like I'm gonna be late to a main. Wait for my drone. Play a little slow. Follow drone. <laughs> send it. Send it. Viper's on B. Jet pyramid. 101 on Viper and Rena's in the bottom mid. Send it. Follow drone? Send it, send it. They didn't have any trips on site, I say we keep running it. Did you do a <laughs> this is tricky, Ulias. It's like you don't want to be. It should be intuitive to you that they're on eco round, yeah? Because you just won. And what do players do on eco rounds? They, they stack, they fight shit unpredictably. They play very reactively. So generally on these rounds, I like playing slow, gathering information. I've talked about this before. I like playing back. Um, if our teammates see some pressure, they give up the space, join up, and then we fight them as a team. Because after your dart, you immediately go into drone and you decide like, let's take all this space back. Well, I'm like concerned. Like they're fighting uh, mid doors. Follow drone. 
Send it, send it. Viper's on B. I don't know how many are A, but I doubt it's two. Plank, plank. Standing ahead. One to one on Reyna healing on my body. She's my door. Yulis, you're missing way too many of these darts, man. <laughs> you're not. How many Sova hours do we have? Because I'm seeing a guy who's not comfortable on Sova yet, and so you can't think about the whole game. Because every round is just me, 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 me. It's I've got dart, I've got drone, you follow it. It's I've got dart, you guys stay back. But you're not thinking at all about the enemy team whatsoever, about your comp whatsoever. How many Sova hours we have? Way too fucking many to be missing this. This should be like totally natural for us, this dart. I don't want you going, oh, I've got a sick lineup. I want you going, their Viper holds B weak. Let's hit B. And then you just happen to have a lineup for it. Does that make sense? It's like your thought process is you identify good lineup first, and then you try to force it into your play. It, it looks so strange. Their Reyna keeps fighting doors blind. Saying a situation calls for lineup, not the other way around. Yeah, like you remember pistol round when he threw the A dart and somebody was like, that seems like a complicated dart. And I'm like, yeah, I usually only like using that when they have an op. See my thought process where they're doing something. I happen to have a tool to deal with it. Shocking now. Yeah, this round looks way better. And you know why it looks way better? Because I think you started this round with a plan, and then you just happened to play it. Like, let, let's see. <laughs> I'm about to throw a good line she's contact on B. She's not <laughs> I knew it wasn't your f***ing plan. <laughs> I'm gonna put up her orb. <laughs> you were, you were literally just getting ready to throw a line up. They pushed A. Care trips. Yeah. Do you have a dart? Shot a dart? Yeah, I can shot. Shocking now. Care back. Yeah, this is like our best round. Poison's gone. Plenty default. Care cipher, find him. CC cipher. Someone's in defender spawn. I'm not sure about that shock. Oh. I'm not sure about fighting that when you have drone. <laughs> he is. Is he just gonna give them this fight? They love this fight. I got the spike. I am the hunter. Just tuck close. She dashed out. She just dashed out. Yeah, she did not. <laughs> you just ghost comms, dude. I feel like this just missed. She's just to the right of it. And we'll break it down. Here you're just aiming to her left for no reason. So that's missing. Here you do the same thing, expecting her to maybe dodge, so you've missed. And here you shoot over here. So this whole time, Jet can be exactly in the same spot where you tagged her. Welcome to my world. Reloading. 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 Just Cypher A. Nice, A clear, A clear. Care flank. Julius, man, you're like so unwilling to adapt. Is crazy. Like they're fighting hard for A main. And you don't even like tuck into the corner before droning. You're like, well, I got to drone fast. My dart's landing. <laughs> yeah, you have two shocks and you haven't thrown either of them, even though the enemies both revealed that they're close A main. And you rush your drone because it has, you want to get it out with your dart. You're like way too married to your lineups. I'm pretty sure I gave you this note. Lineups, I guess I put it on defense, but it's the same shit. Lineups are meant to be used. You already happen to be in the position that they're designed to be thrown from. I'll pop dart for anybody wanting to uh, get, like, maybe either Jet or Reyna pushing up elbow. Like, what do you mean? We're on round nine right now. What do you mean pushing up elbow? The way they fight mid is so ob... It's, like, predictable. They fight mid doors. They fight tunnels, nest. They don't really push elbow much. They play backside B, either Cypher or Viper. Pretty passive. That's their setup. So your dart is countering none of that. 
Yeah, sure. Maybe they'll push elbow this round. What do I know? But, um... I think, yeah, Jet push up elbow. I'll it doesn't make logical sense. Standing ahead. I have the spike. Reloading. They're not there. As soon as she pops Molly. There's the Viper Orb. There's the guy Nest I talked about. Reyna's probably out mid. And we lose the round. That's second Molly. Call while I'll drone with it. I have 70. Take flying out. Cypher trip, cypher trip. Enemy that. Killing sight. Oh, 108 cypher 108 spike down Apple. yeah and then we just hit viper cypher yoru and reina on b Apple. and we cypher knew about this trip right here and i feel like we should be screaming run go a and we gotta clear the dude who's lurked up mid or something this is terrible Wait a moment. And see. Okay, I was about to say, if we won this round, I was going to lose my marbles. Darting for backside, lands late, and droning out, just same as usual. Standing ahead. <laughs> you fucking missed. <laughs> you just rushed the dart. That's like the, the the fifth dart. This VOD. Julius. So are doing contact push with worse tanks better? Yeah, but you were throwing plans at a dartboard blind until one hit. So I don't care that your contact pushes is working i care that the logic you utilize to come to a plan is sound and your logic is not sound so i'm mad you, you could igl a half that goes 12 0 and i could be mad and you could igl a half that goes 0 12 and i could be proud of you okay you have to detach yourself from the outcome of the round and attach yourself to the the process because i i don't care if you win or lose the round uh, i'll be very very proud if you apply sound reason to your your strategy these lineups are tools which you use when you recognize a weakness in the enemy's position. Let me demonstrate. Let's pretend we're facing a team that's playing weak side A with an operator. Bam. Okay. So I'm starting with a place off in the enemy team. Weak side A with an operator. What do you call? Weak side A with operator? I've run the A take. What do you mean the A take? I've seen multiple A takes from you. Late backside are with drone. Drone? Perfect. That makes sense. But I want you to understand that there's no, um, there's no wrong answer. You could have also have said, let's run, we'd fake B presence to pull the op off of A and then re-hit A 40 seconds later when my dart recharges. That's also valid. The point is, as long as your strategy targets the enemy positioning, I'm happy. So yeah, your, your, your bounce recon thing into drone is perfectly fine, but there's lots of strategies here. I also, not sure if you noticed, mid doors is completely open here. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I knew you were going to say your fucking lineup play, which is why I left mid doors open entirely just to, like, prove a point that you wouldn't see it because you're, like, blinded by your lineups. Now, now, your play there is good, though. The uh, the bounce dart and drone, that is good against the weak side op. So you get credit. It's just more I'm trying to show you. you you're not thinking about the game. You're just thinking about your lineups. Does that make sense? Every round, we're just missing easy plays because you're locking yourself into a certain decision making box a box that's very inflexible and requires you to play a certain way which will result in you getting giga cooked by teams that happen to play in a, a certain way that's also bad but specifically strong against your unique set of tools but i'm gonna play it back because you're gonna see it so pistol round i like to call it rushes so i don't like your slow yeah, play here but whatever we'll ignore we're pistol round but what did we learn yeah. pistol round we're gonna play it back as you learned Wall nothing, up. but now let's actually learn something. Reloading. Running out. Just playing right. Diddy. Bro, I'm dead. Reloading. Believe it or not, she's playing there like every round. Trip. What's that? A trip? That We've seen that trip before. Them. Nobody followed drone. Reloading. Okay, there's Reyna and there's Cypher. So, what did we learn? We learned Reyna's playing near mid doors, Jet's playing back right Titty, and Cypher was playing A site. And believe it or not, this is their setup a majority of the whole game. The so trip. we basically learned everything on Pistol Round. Because we can reasonably put Viper on B, and now we just don't know how Yoru likes to push. So you'll see, there's Jet. 
There's random mid doors. No okay. I'm sticking plant. Nice picks. Cypher sight. Cypher back sight. Yuru's got some TP to rotate. Viper's latest to the party. Bet. The Cypher floats. So now, round three. Give me a new call. So what do we know? So we know Jet's like always in this area. Super predictable. We know Reyna is like always in this area. Super predictable. We have a likely hunch that Viper plays over here. I'm gonna use yellow to represent likely. We don't know where Yoru is. We use this weird bubble for that. But we do know that he has a TP somewhere passive back here. And then Cypher appears to float. So we'll just call it 50-50 that he's A or B. This is the context in which you need to make a plan. So now give me any logical plan whatsoever based off of this. It doesn't have to be good. doesn't have to be bad. I just want you to apply reasoning based off of this setup from the enemy team. This likely setup. We don't know Yoru's position. We don't know Viper's, but I think these are reasonable guesses. We assume Cypher goes back to A. Sure, we'll put him there. I'm down. 3B, two elbow for a B hit. I don't like it. How about... Hey guys, they're on eco round. Their Yoru plays TP towards A. Let's establish some A presence. I'm going to recon and we'll take A main orb, but let's look to end B. We'll make Yoru TP over towards A and then we'll hit Viper alone on B when my recon's back up. Because we don't know where this guy plays. He might push elbow. He might flank out mid. So I'm trying to eliminate that in my plan by pressuring him to teleport over here, where now I know his location, leaving B wide open. Fake A, MB. Uh, that's my plan. A tool which I did not see you use all attack half, a fake. And fakes are really strong against Yoru because Yoru uh, fast teleports. He's super fast to rotate. But additionally, as always, there's multiple plans. Look, halls, it's completely open. Again, um, contacting elbow could be really good. Like, even though we don't know how this Yoru plays, we do know that he's alone if he fights mid or halls. And so, yeah, sending like a five stack contact could work. Yeah, so you recon. And I, I want to grab um, the Valo plant after the first kill right here. So this is round three, and I want to see how close we are because we're just guessing. And guesswork is uh, less instructive than factual work. All right, look where they are. Jet's playing exactly where we thought. Reyna's playing exactly where we thought. Cypher is perfectly between the two that we averaged. Yoru's mid, okay? These fights start happening, and it looks like, yeah, they actually crunched down um, mid and elbow. Yeah, so here you just recon for B. Let's look at round four after the kill because I feel like their uh, positioning is really predictable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, look, they're in the same positions. Did they move at all? This, this is round three. This is round four. Round three, round four. Round three, round four. And these kills both happen seven seconds into the round. Standing ahead. Who's next? Uh. You're ulted B. You're ulted B. Oh, wait, we already died. What, what did we die to? Uh. Oh, that's new. Completely new setup. Reyna up, nest, and conveniently halls is still open. But this is a completely unpredictable setup. They worked us this round. Okay? And this round, totally fine you lose this round. Because, like, if you called, like, hey, Reyna's going to fight doors. Let's stack up to fight her. And then uh, she doesn't peek. We start walking mid and we die to nest. Valid. We had the wrong read. So I want you to think of it this way. You played an entire attack half with no reads whatsoever, which are set effectively the same as the wrong read every round. And with the wrong read every round on attack, you brought the game to... Did, did we win? Yeah, we won 14-12. So worst case, you, go, you start playing for reads and you get them wrong every single time and you win this game 14-12. Best case, you get like eight of them right and you smash on attack and, and you crush this game and game plus a billion. So I need you to understand, it's not about being right. It's about trying to be right. <laughs> and because uh, people are unpredictable, but at the same time, they're predictable. Viper's not playing wrong by being predictable, right? Correct. Correct, Lucas. Being predictable is not important. You don't need to aim to be unpredictable in solo queue, especially if your like, strategy is very strong. Like Sova playing fast rotate, nest and halls with recons for the enemy pops is strong, even if predictable. You have to be careful if we start playing in like a tier two game and you do this every round, well, then they're going to try to um, figure out what your protocol is to figure out when you throw that recon. They're going to trick you into throwing that recon. They're going to go the other side. So being predictable can be a problem at the top level. In fact, I'm going to pull up a perfect example of this because it just happened the other day. You guys remember Sentinels versus Gen G uh, grand finals. Congratulations, Sentinels. We're going to talk about bind and how, in my opinion, Gen G 
got robbed. Uh, Macro-wise, I think Gen.G shit on Sentinels on this map. I think Sentinels uh, were just the better team when it came to... Uh, you know, wrangle when it just came to the game. So I'm going to tell you one thing. Watch Shower's Orb from Sentinels Defense. And I want you to realize that they go for this orb when they're strong side all the time. And when they're weak side, they do not. Like We're strong side. What are we going to do, chat? The hands of Gen G. We're going to take the orb. Pissed around again. Very clear focus. Gen G looking to fight over Shower's control. That's Hello. where Tens and Second both are. They are rapid onto the corner here. White face, three players though. Left to fight them. So Gen G already know their strong side. Gen G already know that this is um, Sentinel's strong side. Ten and I'll prove it. Keeps. So let's just skip this round, Previous it doesn't matter. Um, just pointing out this one predictable pattern that gives away Sentinel's whole position. He gets so round two. What are we? Strong side A. What are we going to do? Let's take the orb. Oh yeah. A little Alpha Yaresk. A lot of solo takes into showers. This time though he's supported with the whole pack almost here. Still outlaw. Into so they already know we're strong side. Escapes without any good reason. They go to hit B. Okay, next round. Game. How many rounds do it take for Genji to realize? Genji already knew this. I'm guessing their analyst prepped this ahead of time. So what Genji starts doing is they start defaulting this camera outside showers to see if Sentinels will break it. It seems to a little bit, but bear in mind we've only seen it once. And if Sentinels breaks it, so hey, guess what? Their game plan against her There's the camera. Ticks. Look what they're doing right now. What are Sentinels doing? They're weak side. Are they fighting up showers for the orb? This no. defensive setup, for example, much more reminiscent of what they've been doing early on in this game and more similar to what they've done classically on the map. So we already know their weak side. It's the Meteor Classic. So we hit A. Next round. Quite time to be from the last setup again prior to time. Look at our setup. Are we fighting for showers? No. Passively positioned. Showers at the start of the round of B long. Quite different from the last time they played against Heritage. Very careful jiggling. It does. So being predictable at the top level can be bad. Um, Similar brutal decision that they have to this make round in this as well. I thought Tenzin's first Molly was fired and rattled, but look, opened it. It's gonna be landing on to B long. That was texture to claim that ground, slowing it down. In the right. So they're just making B noise to try and make a, a even like team maybe team even one defender. Back him so up right side. behind him here. On a classic okay. playbook of Gen G, just contacting in, hoping that they can take a fight. Is it worth to create predictable patterns with the intent to fake it later? Trap, is that flawed logic because you're wasting rounds? In a professional setting, people do that. That is a real thing that professional teams will try to do. They will try to give like, they'll try to know their own tells and like adjust how they play against future teams to anticipate them having prep against them. In a solo queue game, that's not a thing. Don't even think about it. Your, your solo queue logic should be very straightforward and linear. You should just expect the enemy team to do exactly what they did last round. I want you to have extremely short-term memory in solo queue and it's going to pay dividends so while being predictable can be bad in a, a professional level in solo queue it's almost never weak because people are not going to super strat around that so it's fine i'm going to double your bounty julius but i'm not going to pay you out i think that's fair because you sort of completed the notes but you also sort of didn't in the sense that you're you're whiffing every single dart on defense you're whiffing half your darts on attack and your util timings are still way off, but for like a different reason. Hey, Woohoo Jin here. Did you know that I stream every weekday doing VOD reviews and playing ranked? If you enjoy the videos, the best way to support me is to show up live. If this video was just uploaded, it's very likely that I'm streaming right now. All of my coaching is free, but that means I need to make money in other ways. Please consider supporting me with a Discord subscription if you can afford to do so. I run many live events for my tier three subscribers as a thank you for letting me pursue my passion every Every day. At 2,000 subscribers, I'll be booking a flight out to EU and to APAC to play in-houses on your servers. Thank you for supporting me.